Hey guys, I hope you guys are doing amazing. Today we're gonna do our vocab lesson once again, and we're gonna start with word number one, cajole. Cajole means to impose someone or to really force someone to do something. So she didn't want to clean the kitchen, but I had to cajole her to do that. So to force, coerce, coerce is another one, and that means to just really push someone to do something, usually against their will. Word number two is wallow. So wallow is if you are deeply indulged in some feeling or some thought uh, for a long time. So for example, you're at work and you're thinking about going on a vacation. You're so tired of working, you're deeply involved in thinking about a vacation and your boss comes to you and he's gonna be like, stop wallowing on your vacation dreams. So it's like really constantly thinking about something deeply involved. And number three is canary. Canary is so common. You would hear this so many times. I can't even count, you know, it's just so many times. Uh, people say that a lot of native speakers. Canary is a bird, okay? So they give a lot of examples of how canary, like whenever they mention canary, it's usually um, how a canary can be eaten because it's a very small bird. It's always a, an, an example of a vulnerable animal. But I wanted to mention this word because first, so you know that it's a bird. Secondly, you know what snitches means? Snitches are people who tell on you. So your younger sister may see you smoking and she will complain to your mother. So something, someone like that is a snitch and an informal term for that is canary. So if you are being called a canary by someone, they're not calling you the beautiful small bird, they're telling you you're a snitch. So that's another meaning of canary, uh, could be used in informal settings. Coerce is the other meaning of the word that we discussed, cajole, to force someone to do something that they don't want to do. That is word number five, uh, sorry, four, coerce. To force someone. So I coerced uh, my employee to um, do this kind of overtime work. For example, someone doing something against their will. Word number five is cognizant. So cognizant is to be able to take notice. So if you are cognizant of your surroundings, you know what is happening around you, you are aware, and that is what cognizant means. The next word is havoc. Havoc is fairly common. I'm sure you guys have heard of it or you probably already know what that means. Havoc is destruction. So the storm raged havoc throughout the town. So probably it damaged a lot of houses and buildings. The next word is horse. How many times does the doctor ask you, do you have a horse voice? That means is your voice uh, rough? Does it sound like you have had a flu and it sounds like you had you have trouble speaking? Then you have the condition of a horse voice. The next word is humanize. So if you uh, want to make something gentler, something more civilized, you can say you want to humanize it. Okay, so uh, for example, we can say that uh, right now, the condition uh, between these two countries is really aggressive. We need to humanize the matters. The next word is wave. So when you want to wave something, it means you want to refrain from it. You want to cancel it. So I want to wave the conditions on this contract, simply meaning that I want to cancel them, get rid of them. That's wave. The next word is wittingly. Wittingly is doing something with intelligence. So I tried to put this person on the spot in a difficult situation, but they wittingly responded very well. The next word is writhe. When you hear this term writhe, it's usually people turning or twisting their body in pain. For example, I get hurt. You know, I try to punch the wall. I'm going to do this, right? That is me writhing in pain because I'm hurt. And writhe is moving your body in a way that shows you are really hurt or affected physically. The next word is utmost. Utmost, uh, sorry, utmost means important, the most important thing. So I can say this letter to be delivered, that action is of utmost importance. Totally, really, completely very important. So utmost means extremely or very and it's usually used when importance is of something is being emphasized the next word is yearling uh, yearling is a good word to know especially when we're talking about farm animals so any farm animal which is uh, a year or two old is a yearling you know we have different terms infant is different for humans yearling is better for farm animals the next word and the second last word is unbecoming 
unbecoming is something that is not suitable and I can say that your uh, dress is unbecoming for a funeral. It means it's not suitable for a funeral, maybe it's too fancy, right? So this is mostly used for dresses and what you wear. It's mostly for clothes and it's a good word to know. Next word is undercharge. This is a very simple word, but you know how we talk about prices or people overcharging us? I didn't know this until today, but the opposite of that is obviously undercharge, which a lot of us don't know. But if you want to tell someone that, hey, you're offering me a cheap price, the word cheap doesn't look so good. You can say, thank you for undercharging me. I know that I'm a loyal customer and I appreciate you undercharging me. So you are getting a good price if you are being undercharged. A very simple word, but not commonly used. So it is something that you can implement in your writing and speaking to make yourself more unique and show off your fancy vocab. If you liked this video, please share, tell your friends about what we're doing here. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you very much.